Hey man, stuff don't go back as quick as it used to. Hey man. But all right, we're going to keep on with this generational message. Look at somebody and say generational blessings. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash generational blessings dot P D F. Amen. See how many folks is here. All right. Amen. Well, this is a nice size. Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash generational blessings. How many of you want a generational blessing? Everybody wants one, but let me ask you this. How many of you want to be a generational blessing? You want to be a blessing to your generation? Hey, man. The decisions you make can make you a blessing to others. Amen. All right. Prayer runs in my family. I need that t-shirt. Amen. The doctor's got a different report than I have. Prayer runs in my family. They say high blood pressure and diabetes and all. Uh uh. Prayer runs in my family. Amen. 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 The mistakes and issues before you do not have to be repeated. Look at somebody say the mistakes and issues before you do not have to be repeated you know y'all I'm telling you the stuff that's in these messages these last few messages I'm doing you need to just recite these things you need to read over them and speak them because they're all declaration ever since I did the declaration message first of the year it's declarations this needs to be declared the devil won't know until you say it Amen. He's looking at your mistakes and saying, "Uh uh-oh, you just like somebody else. You're going to be just like your mother, your father. You're going to be just like some other person that may have failed. He's going to keep saying that until you say the mistakes and issues before me, I don't have to repeat. And even if I repeated them, I'm forgiven for it and I don't have to repeat it again. I'm not in a cycle. I'm not under a curse. I'll stop it. In the name of Jesus, your life, though affected and changed by your predecessors or those that raised you, is not totally defined by them if you are saved. Just because they raised you. Amen. And you got to learn how to take lemon and what? Make some lemon. Don't lemonade taste good. But a lemon by itself, not so much. You got to learn how to take it. And they may have done a horrible job, but there are things they did that you benefited from, that you can take and make even better. That's making lemonade. Amen. You may have been raised by wolves, real wolves. Amen. But when you get in church, you got to praise can't nobody match. Oh, woo! I mean, everybody get to going in. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> nobody else do that. They weren't raised by you. you took what you, what you learned and use it for the good. Amen. You don't have to act like a wolf. Amen. Don't treat people like you're a wolf. Amen. But if you ever lost in the woods, I want to be with you. I want to be on that trip. When I'm run up on you, oh, whoop, 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 whoop. And you're like. (laughs) (laughs) Take it and use it. Amen. I'm saying that jokingly, but that's really true. Amen. You've learned some things. You saw some things you shouldn't have seen. So you make sure you protect your children from those things. But the good parts you take and you use them. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new what? Creature. You are new. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And somebody said, but everything looked the same. Keep living. They'll start looking better if you're doing better. If you do better, things will get better. God has an individual plan for you. If you are diligent in accepting and following it, then you and your generations can be blessed. All you have to do is decide that you want God's blessings on your family. When you make that decision and follow that plan of God, then your generations could be blessed. Everyone else in your family could be messed up growing up, but your family could be different. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Now, this is how the Lord thinks. He said, toward you, I have thoughts of peace. Now, you would think that God is somewhere with his finger on the button ready to destroy you. He said, no, I have thoughts of peace. That's the devil thinking like that. And that's the devil got you thinking like that. We are God's precious creation. You know how you treat something that's precious to you? Are your children precious to you? You handle them with care, don't you? Mothers, don't you? Your love for them is unconditional. No matter what, you're going to be there for your baby. Amen? You know, in African-American community, the, 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 the women do that for the kids and don't even do it for their husbands. Uh-oh. They don't have that kind of unconditional love for the husband. Children can do no wrong. Husband do one wrong. Did I just preach? See, somebody like, now how did you weave that? Oh, that was in my gullet. Yeah, because we got to reprogram that. That's a part of your sordid slave history. You were taught that the black man was an animal. Yeah. And so you treat him like that when he fails. But when your son or daughter fail, you're forgiven. And it's unconditional. That was implanted in the African American community. To force our children to grow up without parents. Loving fathers, to be exact. I know I just preach. Ooh, you can look like you want to look, but you know it's true. Is it not true? Yeah. Son done robbed the bank and the cops chasing him. You done jumped in the way. Ah, stop it. That's my baby. He couldn't have done it. He got money coming out of every pocket on him. A whole trail of change and nickels. Nickels everywhere, just nickels. He robbed the cats, the, the, the change draw. Nickels, dimes everywhere. Uh-uh, stop! He didn't mean it. His gun is still smoking. He shot 20 people. He didn't mean it. But let that husband come on late, come home late one night. Forget her birthday one time. Oh, you're just an ingrate. You're just, you're terrible. You're just, oh, I wish I'd never married ya. Why did I do this? I'm preaching. Yes, it's the truth. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, society, you've been programmed to do that. The husband helped you get the children. Your, your, your devotion should, to, should be to him first. And then the children. See, nobody want to do that. I remember I had to jack up one of my kids one time and tell them, let them know. Don't you raise your hand in my wife. I'll destroy you and have another one. Because we was together before you. 
we will have another one. We, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where your devotion is supposed to be. Your husband. Amen. See, that's where the unconditional love starts. Then when it's exhibited, it's taught to the children by example. God says the thoughts I think towards you are thoughts of peace, not evil. I'm not the one thinking evil of you. That's what God is saying. I'm not looking at you and hating you. He can't because Jesus' blood blocks all of that. He can't even see that side of you. The Bible said when you repent, your sins are forgiven. As far as, you know how far the, as the east is from the west? The east keeps going and the west keeps going. So he's not looking at you like that. That's people's opinions. That's the devil. Somebody made you feel bad about yourself and you can't get past it. And the devil's ultimate lie is that God feels that way about you. He's, he's telling you right here. And this is before Jesus. He said, no, these are the thoughts I have toward my people. He said, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Meaning I'm thinking past what you're doing now to see how you're going to end up. That's why the Savior has to come. That's why he had to give his only begotten son because he, was th he wanted an expected end. He wanted you back in Eden where we fell from. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. No matter what happened before you, the end of it all is determined by what you do now. Amen. Look at somebody and say, now. Right now. Your end is determined by what you do now. You must break curses to get blessings. Amen. 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 You must not continue to repeat the sins of those before you. But instead, accept the blessings of God that were intended for them and you. Amen. 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 So sometimes the person was blessed, but God is going to continue the blessing onto you so you can fulfill it and experience it. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Jacob was the one that had the 12 sons, the tribes. So Abraham didn't get to see that promise. But he was a part of the promise. Sometimes you have to play your part in the promise. Amen. God got a plan for your children. But he needed to come through you. You're a part of his plan. My mom did that one day back there. We was just going through all the things that happened for the enemy to try to kill me when I was young. I was the only kid that kept having serious things happen to him, sickness-wise. Yeah, because the enemy did not want me to live because he knew exactly what I had to do. Yeah, but that don't throw shade on my sisters. They had to be there too. And play a part in it, just like my sister's playing a part in it now. We're all a part of it. You got to play your part. They wild out it. I ain't good. Uh, that, that. Then you're going to miss it. You're going to miss what God is doing in your family. Yeah. Man, I had to preach the truth on hip hop in Chicago because Bishop Logan had to hear it. And me and him had to become very close friends so that a few years later, his son would gain interest in my daughter. 
Once he gained interest, eight years later, they have little Xander. Now the promise is on Xander, but we all help fulfill it. Somebody said, how you know a promise is on him? Watch what I do. Watch me, watch me make him promised. <laughs> you, you'll see. <laughs> he ain't talking about spiritually. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but all that had to happen. Amen. Amen. And it's so crazy. I preach down there, but because I knew Jay Bryan from him opening up for me in Detroit. He came down with Gerard and all of them when I did, what did I do, part five? I did part five in Chicago. That had to happen. So he would see the ministry and decide that he wanted to be a part of it. You know why that happened? For your children. Because your children needed what was in him. And he needed the studio that was going to be built <laughs> so he could make the music for people all over the world to hear. Yeah. Say no, no accidents in here. The devil stops accidents. He stops those from happening. He's on haphazard events. No, it's purpose by God. It was important. Yeah, all them times you and your husband said, you know what? That's it. I'm sick of you. Every marriage does that. Amen. That's it. But you got to hang on in there because there's more to the story. Somebody has to be born into that for God to fulfill his promise. His promise. That's why you got to hang in there. Look at somebody and say, hang in there. And you're going to let the devil stop you? What if Mary had just said, Joseph, I'm, you jive. That's it. That's it. Mary was fully submitted to God's plan. And so was Joseph. But God's plan had to be fulfilled had to happen that way Amen. sometimes it takes a while and you gotta wait Amen. but wait I say on the Lord Amen. wait they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength that means after you wait a long time and got tired gotta give you some more strength to wait a little longer wait on the Lord they that wait on the Lord shall renew thy strength they shall what? Mount up with wings as eagles. That eagle is a special bird too. That eagle is a special bird, man. When you soaring like an eagle, other birds try to jump on you because they can't fly as high as you. So they try to hit your ride and hang on you. But you know what the eagle does? The eagle said, you know what? I don't need you hanging on me. So he goes so high that the other bird can't breathe. And the other bird just falls to his death because he's not an eagle. He can't soar like the eagle. We're going to mount up with wings like an eagle, meaning we'll be higher than those that are against us. Higher than those that are just hitching a ride. Higher than those. Lord, take us higher. No problems bother you when you high. When you up higher than the problem. But you got to allow the process. Trust God for the process. Amen. Got to break the curses. You got to not continue to repeat the sins of those before you. But instead, accept the blessings of God 
that were intended for them and you. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you can't keep repeating the sins because the wages of that is death. You want the promise and the plan to continue through you, you got to stop the sins. You're repeating the sins, you are bringing the curse. If you're bringing the curse, you're cursing your children. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. All of this is a process. I'm preaching it like it can happen in one day. No, it's a process. And God knows it. That's why Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will guide you right through that process to full deliverance so that his plan can be fulfilled through you. Past can't hurt you anymore unless you let it. Uh Uh-oh. Your adversary, the devil, will always come to bring up your past sins and errors to shake your faith and distort your progress. Nothing slows you down more than you thinking about the stuff you used to do. Once you feel unworthy, you don't feel worthy. (laughs) That'll slow down your reading of the word. That'll slow down your listening and hearing. That'll slow down your coming to church. Yeah. Amen. You focusing on your era and your past, those are the folk that miss all that church. You're like, brother, where were you? <laughs> you know, this Sunday, man, things got a little heavy. What you think the church is for? Things are heavy on all of us. We come to church to get light. <laughs> Amen. Coming in feeling one way, as soon as you hear PJ singing, you start feeling better. Soon as you hear this praise thing, soon as you hear this bad, soon as you come in and feel all this cold air, my God, there's no hell in here because it's cold at ABC. It's cold. It's a blessing. See, y'all understand when I got here, they said that these units wasn't going to work. They said these units was going to break down on us and we was hot. Y'all remember? We was hot here, but now, oh, we blowing smoke. People don't want to get with me. Ain't nobody get with me. Everybody like, okay, yes, yes, yes. Well, y'all better soak it up because that's some good units, but <laughs> round, this is Texas. So when this metal building heat up in June, you're going to be like, pass the turn the hell up. I'm going to be laughing at you. Uh, you didn't savor the days. You didn't savor. <laughs> you should have stored it up. Oh. No, nah, don't come to me now. So I'm trying to enjoy it. I'm sweating. And you freezing. You better, you better tell them. June is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, June is coming. Amen. Amen. Oh, and all these people. Real shoot too. Amen. Amen. But your adversary, he going to keep bringing up your past. To distort your progress. You know you can't go forward looking back. That's a physics principle. Amen. You can't drive your car constantly looking in the rearview mirror. Amen. Amen. Now women can drive their car looking in the vanity. I've seen that done. Put on makeup. Until they get there. Until they get there. I've seen that happen. You seen that happen? I've, I've seen it. Yes, now that little, little square mirror, they can, do, they can work wonders with that. But the, but the rear view mirror, you keep looking in that, you're going to crash. Because you're looking at what's behind you. Amen? First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a what? Roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour oh this word will preach 
If he can keep you feeling bad about your past or because of your past, then he can keep you from expecting future blessings. Amen? So you need to just call it boneheaded and move on. Look at somebody and say, move on. Look at the person next to you and say, move on. You've been there long enough. You parked there long enough. Yeah, you did the fool. You was boneheaded. Now move on. Amen? Because if you stay there, you're stuck there. God can't do anything with you if you stay there. Amen. And don't be tormenting each other with the past either. Husbands and wives. Amen. If you want to move forward in your marriage now. If you want to stay jacked up like it is, then keep bringing stuff up. But God is not a God. See, I, I would want my home to reflect Jesus and not the devil. Amen. Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have, I don't think I'm all the way there. He said, but this one thing I know I do, and you better do it too. Forgetting the things which are what? And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, how many of you want to be like Paul? I'll be like Paul. Amen. I don't need the jail and the beatings. Amen. But I take them for Jesus. I take them for Jesus. I, don't, I ain't wishing that. But I do want to be able to forget the things which are behind and reach forth unto the things which are before. Because that's where the plan of God is. It's in front of you. The devil speaks and works through people. They will accuse you and attempt to shame you. Man, you better check your friends. Do you know you can have a friend that's a devil? I mean, how do I know? By what they say. Are they speaking life or death? Are they encouraging you or tearing down others? They don't have to be tearing you down. If they turn down others, they are tearing you down when you're not around. Because a tearing down person just tears down. Amen. So you better watch who you're hanging around because... The devil can jump in some people too easy. I've had people in my life I had to tell them goodbye because the devil has too much access to you, bro. You make it too easy for him to hurt me. They will accuse you and attempt to shame you so that you will feel that God is done with you. Anybody ever felt like God was done with them? I have. Yeah, they, yeah, people will make you feel like God is done with you and the curse has won. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yes, That's what a suicidal thought is. Yeah. You've had suicidal thoughts? I have. You've had them? That's all it is. It means that you believe that the curse has won. Uh-huh. Amen. And then it's normal. Depending on what medication you take it. Yeah, or what situation you in. Devil's going to bring those thoughts. You shouldn't even be here. Things would be better without you. This is real life, amen? This ain't Ebenezer Scrooge. You ain't going to get that. <laughs> no. This is real life. So you got to seize that thought and speak to that thought and say, no, I'm supposed to be here. God has a purpose for me, and I'm confident in it. The curse can't win because I'm not a curse. I've been blessed and I'm a generational blessing. That means not only am I blessed, but my children are going to be blessed. And they're going to bless their children. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of That means that you got to have confidence. Paul said, being what? Confident of what? This very thing. What very thing? That once God starts, he's going to finish. Once he starts, he's going to finish. And there are people that are going to be saved because of the decisions you made. Yeah, 
because of the de- remember that decision that your whole family and everybody told you you was crazy and you shouldn't do that somebody's gonna be saved because you went against the naysay and did what God told you to do what if Abraham had to listen to his family I don't know about you sir Jordan we don't know what's out there that part of the world haven't been explored yet. Abraham like, no, I know what God told me. He told me to get away from y'all, probably because you're talking like this. So I see you. Well, matter of fact, I won't see you. Holla. Amen. Now, don't tell your family that. See, somebody will hear that. Somebody is dialing right now. No, you're texting. Holla. Abraham said, don't, don't do that. Amen. Don't do that. <laughs> Cause you don't have nowhere to surge on. <laughs> but you gotta be confident yeah. that once he starts, he's gonna complete it. Yeah. And that's all you do. When you're down, when you're out, when you're at when you just feeling like God is done with you, when you feel like you just blew it, you need to quote this scripture. Say, I'm confident, Lord, because your word said that once you start. You're going to complete it. Amen. God, you've been preparing me to be a good wife. So I'm not letting go of that promise. Devil come and say, oh, you too old. That's old men. What's wrong with you? Just like you get old men get older. Amen. Lord, I'm getting old and my body is whack. Sitting. Oh, that's a man that want that. Amen. God is right. You keep being caught. Look at somebody say, be confident. You be confident. God, I'm getting old. I need, I need a wife. I can't get your wife. Be confident. That's what God want to tell you. He got it. No, no woman wants you and you talking to me like this. Da, 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 da. Go get one. Be confident. Once God starts. Amen. I'm going to tell you, there was just a level of confidence me and my wife maintained about our children. We just wasn't worried about certain things. Because we kept a level of confidence that God started this work. And he promised me my children would be okay. He promised me my marriage would be okay. So it's just certain things. Ah, Confident. You better get some confidence. Look at somebody and say, get some confidence. Amen. Because if you are confident in this, you know. God is not through with you yet. Amen. Amen. We are blessed because God blessed us. The devil can't stop the blessings of God. But our decisions, feelings, and thoughts can hinder us from being blessed. If we believe the report of the enemy and focus on our error and bad decisions then we can become victims of the curse through our unbelief. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man. Who Have you ever just read this scripture? You want to be blessed? You want the blessing of God on you? Well, first, blessed is the man that walketh not around with stupid people. How you going to be blessed and everybody around you stupid? How are you going to be blessed and you hanging around the spirit of dumb? All your friends dumb. Well, I pick dumb friends because they make me feel smarter. No, they make you dumber. So if you want to be blessed, first of all, you got to stop walking around with ungodly counsel. What's ungodly counsel? People that's acting ungodly. Saying ungodly things. Yeah. 
are gossiping, busybody, tail-bearing, all that's just ungodly. God said he hates that. Feet that run swift to mischief? Yeah, you do that online too. Searching for mischief. Running swiftly. Remember when we was in high school? <laughs> this is back when I was in high school. Things were different. A fight or start, classrooms were empty. One time a fight started outside in the bungalows. Did anybody have bungalows at their school? That's when the school got too big, but they didn't really want to have a serious construction plan. So they parked them big bungalows outside. Y'all remember those? Fights was in the bungalows. We had a three-story school. I mean, the, it spread through that school like the internet. We, that was the first social media. Because it was two well-known people fighting. We was all waiting on that fight. I mean, everybody, just empty. Just, I mean, we was all, our feet were running swiftly to mischief. Yeah. And that's what some of y'all do. I mean, soon as you hear so-and-so say something, your feet just... That's ungodly. Quit hanging around people like that. Yes, yes. They stop you from being blessed. And some people have given up on being blessed. They just, they're just messed. They gave up on being blessed and they want to be your friend. Why do they want to be your friend? To stop you from being blessed. Because misery loves company. Somebody like, what scripture is that? It ain't in the Bible. But blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the God. Then, nor standeth in the way of sin. What you doing at the club if you save? What you doing at the, what are you doing at the club? Well, it wasn't a club. It was a church co-ed meet and greet. That's the club. Why you at a church co-ed meet and greet? What is that? So the single people can get to know each other? And get phone numbers and set up meetings. Oh, it got quiet in here. Yeah, yeah, somebody just got a new age way to meet some men. Be seen. Ain't no good, good dudes looking for no women at no meet and greet. You know what they looking for? Meat. Without the greet. <laughs> I'm telling it like it is. And I don't care what you think. Hey, man, I just spoke truth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why we don't do that junk in here. We have a woman's thing for the singles. Men can hang out and we ain't putting y'all together and matching y'all up. And quit doing that with your children too. Ooh, as soon as they get old enough, watch out, girl. You... <laughs> Foolishness. You know the Baptist church used to marry them. Had a little, you remember that? The little marriage. Poor folk do some stuff. Stop standing in the way of sinners. Get away from, look at somebody say, get away from sinners. And don't try to say, well, I'm just around them so I can reach them and try to help them. They changing you. Amen, you smoking weed now. Yeah. I'm taking my time, so don't, don't look at the clock. I know this cold ass blowing in your eyes like the sad man. <laughs> Mr. Sad Man, bring me a dream. <laughs> Wake up! Amen. You know, some folk trying to go to sleep so they don't have to hear it. <laughs> 
Wake up, devil! Listen to this truth. Amen. Don't be standing in the way of sinners. Nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. Having a problem with everybody. You want to be blessed, you can't have a problem with everybody. Because the person you got a problem with has your blessing. They have your blessing. You got a problem with everybody, so you can't be blessed. You miss out on all your blessings because you got a problem with everybody. I've learned to get along with folks, especially with folks that can bless me. Amen. I don't hate any millionaires that I know. Amen. I know I'm preaching. It's all about what we believe. If we believe God's report and stand on his promises, make good decisions and fight the good fight of faith, then we will be blessed. And our children and children's children will be blessed as well. Proverbs 13 and 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Amen. Amen. Summary. This was a blessing. If you want generational blessings. Amen. Blessings need to be spoken in order to be determined. Jesus rose with all power over every curse and sin. We must speak against all curses and sins with this same power. Amen. Our authority is in Christ Jesus. And with that authority comes power to cancel curses and halt sinful habits and addictions. Did you hear that? You struggling with a sinful habit or an addiction or a curse? Jesus' power can cancel it. Yeah, you don't need a a nine-step program Jesus can do it I've seen I've seen the power of God take take the taste of crack out of folks yeah yes I've seen it by their faith by your faith nicotine I've seen folks not want to smoke again and can't stand the smell of it amen amen cussing God will take cussing out of your tongue. Amen. I was the cussingest cusser that ever cussed when I was young. I cussed for fun. We used to make songs with all cuss words just because our fathers was pastors. We were bad, me and my friend. We were terrible. We just cussing just because cussing could be done. Just in the hall, just cussing. Folk looking at us, the real street folk looking at us like, why you cuss so much? Gangsters, why you cussing all the time? Pimps, hey man, you cuss too much. I mean, they all just, we just cuss, cussing for nothing. Just, I mean, for nothing. For no oh, you remember? Remember? <laughs> we never remember me in high school. <laughs> we were just, just bad for, we were bad for no reason. Me and my friend Moody, his daddy was a pastor, my dad, and we were just bad for no reason. Principal brought us into the office one time and said, why y'all bad for no reason? Your daddy is a preacher. We were just bad, just cousin, cousin. But when I gave my life to the Lord, I asked the Lord, I said, God, take the desire of it out of me. Now I can't even watch a movie if it's got too much cussing in it. It feels like somebody is sticking me with a pen. I just can't cuss. When I say words that sound like cuss words, my kids just laugh at me. You know, certain words you say, because, you know, I got these muscles right here that hurt sometimes when I stand too long, they're called so ass muscles. And when I say that, Landon and I be Jonathan, they think Cat Williams just start driving the car. Why you got to put the emphasis on the end, daddy? That's what it is. I ain't cussing. Look, somebody looking at me like, you just cussed past it. The Hebrew Israelites was right. That's the name of the muscle. Man. 
But that's, they don't hear me cussing at home. That's why it's so funny to them, because I ain't walking around cussing. God delivered me from that. Amen. Because I needed him to. I ain't going to be no cussing preacher. Amen. Some things happen overnight. Some things, deliverance comes over time. Got to keep catching yourself. I didn't have to catch myself with the cussing. Amen. But sometimes, you know, you may be a drinker. Got to catch yourself. Amen. Our authority is in Christ Jesus. And with the authority comes power to cancel curses and halt sinful habits and addictions. There is not a curse that Christ's power cannot break. Amen. There is not a sin that Christ's power cannot forgive. Though we may struggle against past sins, curses, and trauma, we do not have to succumb to them. We have victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. So keep praying it. Young boy, young girl, you may have a secret sin you're struggling against. Something your mother or father may not know about. Keep believing God for deliverance. Go talk to your parents. Amen. Tell them. Because that's an act of faith. Can I keep preaching? We are blessed and highly favored by God. Now that's just not a cliche. How you doing brother? Oh I'm blessed and highly favored. No we really are highly favored. He thinks highly of us. He didn't send Jesus to die for the angels. He didn't send Jesus to die for any other celestial beings. He didn't send Jesus to die for any beings living anywhere else in our galaxy. He sent Jesus to die for us because we are blessed and highly favored and he wanted to be with us. He wants us walking around with him. So we're blessed and highly favored for real. We are the head and not the tail. For real. We are God's chosen people and not forsaken souls. God moved heaven and earth to bring us redemption. <laughs> heaven and earth to bring us redemption so that we can sit in heavenly places. We are not losers, but we are winners. We are not defeated, but we are victorious. We are not forgotten, but we are remembered. We are not cursed, but we are blessed. Let your tongue proclaim the blessings of the Lord over you and your children and your children's children. You are free from all curses and your generations will be blessed because of it. In Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is who we are. This is who we are. Psalm 78 and 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to who? He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to us, that the generation to come might know them, pass it down, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Keep talking about it. Why? Why? Because that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. This is generational blessings. And look at this. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and re rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. So our fathers, the fathers were stubborn and rebellious. But God said, keep passing it down. Because another generation's coming from that generation. This generation wouldn't be if it wasn't for that generation. So they can't discredit that generation. Even though that generation messed up, the next generation can be blessed if they make the right choices. 
This is the generational blessing of God. The curse has to stop if we declare that it stops. So it don't matter where you came from. Don't matter who you were born to. Don't matter how you were raised. None of that matters. The mistakes you made before. The mistakes you made last week. Nothing else matters. If you make the right choices now, you can be blessed. And your generations will be blessed. Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I want my generation blessed. I want my children blessed and my children's children blessed because God has blessed me. Amen. Amen. If you want that, just come up. We're going to pray with you. Matter of fact, it's going to probably be too, but just come on up anyway. Amen. And we're going to declare the blessings of God over you and your family, over your children, over your husband, your wife, over your children's children. No more struggling with it. I know we probably going to run out of room. Just get out in the aisle or something. Just acknowledge that you want it. The blessing. The generational blessing of God. It keeps going. He just stated in that passage. You don't have to be like the previous. You don't have to be like the predecessors. You don't have to carry the generational curse. Doesn't have to affect you. In that way, the decisions you make right now, the decisions you make today can bring a generational blessing where you are a blessing to an entire generation. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we come before you as adamant believers. Father God, hearing this word and receiving it, desiring this blessing for our families. Father God, for our children. Father God, for our children's children. God, let your blessings be upon us right now in the name of Jesus. Every sin that was committed by our fathers, our father's fathers, and however it trickled down, we cancel it right now. We speak against it right now, and we ask you to forgive us for partaking in it right now. Father God, we are sorry we ever did that. Forgive us, Lord, for any sin of our fathers that we've committed because we want to be blessed generationally. So we cancel every generational curse in the name of Jesus. We cancel every sin addiction. We cancel every curse in Jesus' name. All the spiritual warfare, Father God, that we fought on this matter. Father God, we bind the demon that's behind it that keeps showing his head, that keeps enticing us, that keeps pushing us to do it. Father God, we bind him right now in the name of Jesus, lock him up, and send him to hell in Jesus' name. We are free from the curse. We are free from sin. Father God, we declare our freedom in this place right now. We're not going to repeat the sins of our predecessors. We're not going to repeat the sin. Father God, we're not going to repeat the curses, even from slavery. We're not going to repeat it. The habits, the things that were placed in our generation, in our ethnic groups, black, white, whoever we are. The things that were handed down through our bloodline. Father God, we come against it right now that it will halt and cease in the name of Jesus. That it will cease cease and desist in Jesus' name so that we can walk in freedom and be a generational blessing to our children and our children's children. We speak the blessings of the Lord over us right now. Come on, lift your hands. And we receive your blessings, God. We receive your blessings, God. We receive your blessings, God. Bless them, Lord. Bless every husband. Bless every wife. Bless every single lady, every single mother. Bless her and her children. Every single woman, bless her. Father God, every single man, bless them, God. Bless them so that they will see and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hug somebody on your way to your seats and say, Every curse is canceled. 
and I speak a blessing on you. I speak a blessing on you, on you, your husband, your wife, your children. I speak a blessing. I speak a blessing because I'm blessed. Because I'm blessed, I speak a generational blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. Because you've heard this word. God has brought you this information so that you can pass a generational blessing onto your seed in the name of Jesus. When the devil tell you you curse, you, t you tell him, no, turn around and tell him, no, I'm blessed. And then turn back around. Keep him behind you. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 